So uh, just lost about half my slides, so. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. Um, there's a, uh, so, so I'm here to, uh, to I, so this is a workshop, right? And I'm looking forward to uh, having everyone uh, take, a, take a stab at, um, at building an, op an OpenShift cluster, an OKD cluster on, uh, on the uh, ARM instances. And I want to talk about the failures and I want to talk about what we see as being the, uh, the next steps in um, building a better ARM support. The, uh, the classic idea here was that we would, ha we would be able to um, s spin up three node clusters for, each, for everyone in the room. So uh, an ARM, I, I mean, I, every, I think everybody's wholly familiar with ARM and the ARM architecture, but they're not familiar with the, with the, uh, with a, the AWS environment. And so I wanted to introduce you to both the trials and tribulations of trying to run Open, OpenShift on ARM and to do that in the context of something that you can uh, destroy and bring back up in, in uh, really no time at all. Um, the uh, second, second part of the, so we'll do that first, and then the second part of this will be uh, walking through what I consider to be the, the scaling model for, uh, uh, I mean, in my mind, the canonical scaling model for, um, for the, the physical nodes and how we can uh, attach those physical nodes in, uh, in a scaling group that uh, allows you to provision uh, a series of nodes. Um, so, um, So there are uh, a number of instances, instance types that were created based on a single uh, uh, hardware profile, right? And each one of these uh, takes up a certain amount of the, of the hardware uh, uh, for an instance normally, right? And we, we've just carved this up into smaller and larger instances. And, one of the things I think everyone is familiar with virtual machines in, in many ways, but uh, uh, one of the things that uh, that we were looking at at Amazon when we made the decision to use to use an ARM architecture were smaller workloads, uh, single-threaded applications, and burstable workloads, and those are not necessarily as well known on the uh, from the perspective of, of uh, uh, OpenShift deployments, because we tend to see OpenShift scaled up, but never down. So uh, what I want to challenge you to do today is to think about how you want, how you would scale down the, uh, an OpenShift cluster. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, point today, I think, is to is to start with um, opening a console, looking looking at uh, the Amazon console, and and uh, uh, having some credentials. So, so I'm going to pass out credentials uh, that you can use to log into an account, and then we have several regions we can uh, we can play with. So um, I have a simple CloudFormation template that will let you spin up a VPC environment and deploy uh, machine images of Fedora 29 that you can use to, uh, as your, uh, your base OS, or your base uh, operating system deployment. And then uh, the, you can use the OpenShift Ansible with a host file that will uh, walk through the creation of in, uh, in short order. So uh, who does want to participate in Building a okay, fantastic. So,
Let me steal that pen. So if you um, want to participate, come on up and uh, let me give you some credentials. Here, just just come around on uh, around my shoulder, and I'll I'll show you. So I've got uh, CZ Workshop zero 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 one zero two, right? Um, if uh, and I'll put on one of my on a new slide the. Um, And then the password is the username uh, dot exclamation point. Right. Mm -hmm. So somebody can be zero zero. Okay. You don't have to write it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Everybody's got it. Okay. So, so just yeah, zero just zero one. Numbers. Yeah. Zero one. Zero two. Thank you. Zero three. Uh -huh. Zero four. I need two of them, please. Sure. Mm -hmm. Zero six. Anybody else? Thanks. Okay. I'm just going to add another. I'm just going to open PowerPoint. So I lost a couple of slides here. Everybody, uh, I'm sure everybody can appreciate how that feels. Um, Is there a? Uh, is, yeah, that's, um, is it, it's on the bottom. Got it. Okay. Okay, so this will get you to um, the console, uh, the management console. This, so with the management console, you can log in. Oh, yeah. So much better with a Z. All right. Um, so log in here, and uh, uh, then I have uh, in S3. There's a there's an S3 bucket that uh, that has the uh, the CloudFormation template you can use. Let me. Uh, the username is CZ. Capital W Workshop. So CZ Workshop and your number. 
and then the password is your username and a period and exclamation point. Oh, yeah, I have plenty, yeah. I think, I think we might just got through six, is that right? Okay, so it's CZ workshop okay. 07, and then the password is the same with a period and an exclamation okay. point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the path to the uh, template file, and that should be pu public. So we're, we're actually getting credentials together and logging in so that everyone can create a small cluster for themselves. So the username is uh, CZ Workshop with a capital W, 08, and the password is the same dot exclamation point. I think that, sorry, I don't have any problem. I need an information to template for it. Oh, let me fix that. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll fix that here. Okay, give that just a minute to propagate.
open the file here. Definitely public. I think I'm a victim of eventual consistency. Is it working your last one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it the same thing that we can find the uh, dev code for the website? What's that? The S can is the same thing that we can find in the. Yes. Yeah. yeah, on the sketch. We can have lots of Oh, uh, go ahead and create one for yourself. So, yeah. So, uh, just go ahead and and in your credit and just create a an SSH a PEM file for for your for your own use. Just log in over here. That'll make it easier. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna log in here so I can so everybody can follow along. like something changed. <laughs> Yeah. 
password. Okay, if, uh, if you don't know how to create your own um, uh, keys, looks like someone has already done it. Uh, you can create a key pair or I can give you one either way. Um, but this is a simple way to do it. You, you'll download it to your laptop and that will give you both the public and the private key together. Right? And then you can just le it leverage it as a PEM file. It's a PEM file. So you have to change the permissions on it so that it's uh, um, readable only by the uh, by your user, your local user. Anybody need credentials that came in later? So the, uh, the credentials are CZ Workshop 09 for mm -hmm. you, and okay. then the password is the same with, with the dot okay. okay, thank you. So there are four, uh, there are four regions we can use. There is uh, uh, the US East 1, which is Virginia in the console. So if you, if you pull down here, there are four regions that have the ARM, the ARM instances in them. There's North Virginia, Ohio, Nor uh, Oregon, and Dublin. So obviously Dublin is closer, but not, but uh, you may get rate li or will get rate limited on the number of instances we can start in any one uh, given um, account. So if you run into an insufficient capacity error, just change to a different uh, a different region. Uh, huh.
That is some solid formatting. What's that? to log in. Yeah, it looks like. the same. There we go. Okay. So, um, just to show you what, what, just to say what this is doing, uh, we are uh, we are creating a key pair. Well, or I'm sorry, we're selecting a key pair from a from a lit from the list of all the key pairs that are there. We're associating either, uh, in this case, either a CentOS 7 or a uh, Fedora image that's uh, with our uh, map for, for instance creation. Um, this starts off by creating a VPC and then uh, populating the VPC with all the important bits, so a subnet, a routing table, a gateway to get you to where you need to be, um, and some default configuration to ensure that there is a public IP address so that you can communicate with the instances uh, for the next <coughs> step. Um, the, uh, each one, so this creates three nodes. Um, three nodes are associated with, the, with, the, with an OpenShift cluster in this case, and that OpenShift cluster is created with a worker to, uh, in, or two workers and one master. Um, the uh, reason we use, so in this case, we're using the, the X, the, 
the four, uh, you'll see in the, the A1 4X large, which is um, the largest instance size that you could use to, to um, push this because running a master on an ARM64 is bleeding slow, right? So, I mean, <clears throat> you have one thread per core. It's, there's not a whole lot of work to be done there. Um, this, uh, then we're adding, we're adding drives so that you can, you can leverage uh, a, a larger space, larger storage space for, um, for your containers and uh, opening up the ports that are required for communicating for the standing up the cluster. The, once the cluster is configured that um, this cluster can uh, be um, can be used to uh, with the OpenShift Ansible. So leveraging OpenShift Ansible, we have a host. I have a host file that we'll look at here. Um, oh no, I don't have the host file up there. Okay. So yeah, once so once the hosts are up. Um, the first thing to do is to enable them for, uh, for, the, uh, for the Docker configuration. And uh, Python 3 Docker implementation is broken <laughs> on the ARM64. So um, there, is a, there is a need to, um, to uh, revert back to Python 2. And then uh, there are uh, once the storage setup is, is there and everything is ready here, I can take the host information and I'm going to upload that now. Um, take the host file and uh, substitute the, um, the, the names that you have for the EC2 DNS names that you have for the, in, the instances that you are created through the CloudFormation template. Take those CloudFormation template name or the, the instance names, plug those into the Ansible host file and leverage those to build, build your cluster. So inherently that's not scalable though. Um, the best way to do this is, and is not a way to play with um, play with uh, the the ARM64 instances, but the best way to do this is to create auto scaling groups and uh, create and leverage uh, the scalar scripts. So uh, in the uh, OpenShift Quick Start, so that uh, that we jointly maintain with Red Hat. There, are, there is a scalar.py script that can be leveraged to create an auto scaling group for each for the worker nodes, and then scaling events can take place to uh, ensure that the credentials are removed. Right, so all the all the information is removed for a specific node before it uh, is uh, turned off. So basically, um, uh, this applied to, so using the scalar.py and the autoscaling groups with the uh, ARM architecture creates a tremendously burstable uh, um, and scale out uh, uh, architecture. So what we're looking for, what I'm looking for is for you to walk away with an understanding that there is, there are two components here that I think are very important to the next generation of OpenShift. Uh, especially in environments where we have uh, on-demand, a lot of on-demand uh, infrastructure. And that is that uh, we can leverage these smaller instance types that are about 45% less cost in, our, in the architectures. And we can do that through um, the use of lifecycle hooks to neatly scale them, scale them up and out of the, uh, of the clusters. So um, I want you to, uh, to take a few minutes and look at, uh, it's an easy thing to find through Google, just the AWS Quick Start for OpenShift, and take a look at the scalar.py um, 
file. And uh, in that file, you'll find the find more m most of the, uh, the the guts of the work that has been done to create an auto scaling model that um, doesn't uh, doesn't require doesn't require you to actively scale down and scale up the nodes on the cluster. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, just answer questions for as much time as we have left. Does anybody have a question about running our, uh, OpenShift on ARM? So you can't do continuous installations, you have to do RPM installations. That's right. <coughs> yeah, the RPM installation requirement is, is something that uh, um, that kind of made me tear my hair out. So, <laughs> um, this is uh, uh, for someone. I think for someone who hasn't who has who hasn't um, hasn't got a whole lot of of uh, experience installing or or operating a uh, an OpenShift cluster. The complications around it are severe, and uh, most of the people who are doing it on the 32-bit architecture or Raspberry Pis, those those are um, those are those are magic configurations. I mean, the requirements around Go were were un up until very recently, um, it was almost impossible to get to get it to compile, and uh, the ARM64 doesn't doesn't have the same problem. That was one of the things that was super exciting to me about using this as a place to deploy the uh, OpenShift Ansible. Um, and, um, and the uh, amount of storage that you can associate, associate with it is fairly large. Um, the, the speed with which you can associate ARM64 with a cluster is pretty, is, is it is uh, mind-blowing, right, to, to spin up a larger number of the instances and to have those register with the cluster. The scaling component of this is a result of having pre and post lifecycle hooks. And the lifecycle hooks, the pre-life, the um, pre-scaling events uh, are there to remove the nodes from the cluster, so everything has to take effect before the, before the node scales down. Um, I have to migrate all of your images or your containers. Everything has to go um, remove the credentials, all of that. And then after, the, after that, the scale down can occur. The same thing happens in reverse, though, with, uh, with a, scaling of a scale up event. Scale like, a scale up event is uh, heavy on the execution in the post lifecycle event. So after the node has been created, the post event takes over and registers that node with the with the uh, with the OpenShift cluster. Well, thanks for taking some time and and uh, looking at how these work and and uh, and seeing it in the console. It seems like we ran into a couple of problems that that uh, are, that stopped you. I'll. I'll uh, look into that and I'll keep this I'll keep the account open for you for the rest of the day so that you can explore.